Hi everybody, just uh, settled back into everyday life after Ireland and uh, gotten a few questions on the gear I ran during that match. So I'm going to do a bit of a overall video on the rifle and what bags and little accessories that I use when I'm at matches. Just to, you know, answer the questions in public because if one guy's asking there's probably a few other ones wondering. Let's just uh, start out with the rifle itself. Up front here we have the Swedish made humid muscle brake. Uh, four port self timing. Uh, used, it's made in uh, 7075 aluminum that's been anodized. This one in particular is, I think this one is actually Cerakoted. I'm not really sure. It's an early uh, version that I got. And uh, well, it's, I think it's in on its fourth barrel right now and still no signs of wear and tear. So aluminum works. Barrel wise, I run the international barrels out of Canada. This is my second barrel from them and it's an absolute uh, tack driver. That's why I, I continue using them. They, were, they work really good. They're cost uh, efficient compared to getting them from the United States. Canada is really easy to work with. The guys at International are easy to work with. They're good talking to. They're, they're very helpful on twist rates and barrel weights and everything and that. This is a seven and a half twist uh, 6BR barrel with a, a marksmanship training unit, MTU profile. It uh, comes out at 26 inches and the shank on the Tikas are a bit smaller compared to the Remington 700 clone, so it's a bit lighter. But weight-wise, the balance of the rifle is just where I've clamped it, just, just ahead of the action. Bipod, uh, I got this guy pod about a year ago now. Uh, and uh, well, as you saw on the video, if you've seen it, it was uh, very nice to work with. It got, it's quick to deploy, you need a new length. It's easy to work with like this. You fold it back, adjust your length of uh, legs to your angle like this. So it's one of the better bipods I've ever had. Uh, well, it's the best bipod I've ever used because otherwise I'd be running something else. So the things you see up here are the MDT weight kits for the ACC chassis. They bolt onto the M locks in front of the KRG Bravo, which I run. It's not so much for about uh, for weight and balance. It's mainly to get a nice place to you see you place your thumb, but obviously on the other side. When you control your rifle on a barricade, you, I like to place my thumb like this and hold the other hand on the bag. Uh, it helps out a lot. I do have one on each side for stability, or you know, so it's an even weight distribution. Uh, underneath I have a sawtooth rifles arca rail for the Bravo because well it does help to have an arca rail you can fit multiple things to it it's get a little bit extra, extra stability uh, well as I said Bravo chassis uh, adjustable butt pad uh, however I do not adjust it as much as I used to these days I just keep it in one fixed position and leave it there uh, on top of the cheek rest I do have the wee bad I don't really know what the name it is, but it's a soft thingy you put there. It's, it helps a bit with the contact, doesn't slip around as much, and it's very comfortable to have. Yeah, Tika action. Uh, a lot of you have asked me why I run Tikas, and I would love a custom action. I, I sure shit wouldn't mind, but it's not worth spending the extra money for me. Because I'm going to take this thing out here. Rifle's totally safe. There's nothing in the magazine. I can take that one out just to show you. And just place it there. The action itself is just, it's just super smooth. It's easy to work with. Trigger is just factory. See here? Set to about 400 grams, I'd say. Very nice action. This one back in there. Uh, up here you'll see a two-round holder from Coltac. Uh, that one gave me a few <laughs> extra points on the cartwheel. Because uh, I was told that there you couldn't use magazines or you couldn't have magazines more than 10 rounds in Ireland. So I took my standard mag plus two mag extension and left it at home and ran a bit more with this thing. Still got one from the match in there. And moving up a little bit, I do have a Picatinny rail from the same company that makes the brake. And on top of the Picatinny rail is a Hawkins Precision Unimount, which is a very, very nice Unimount. Especially with how you can always see the bubble level on the side. I'll 
Turn the rifle around here. I'll show you. It's here. So when you got your chic on the rest, you can always, with your uh, left eye, it's always very easy to look above everything without changing your head or on your cheek rest or anything. Just see the bubble level at all times. That thing has helped me quite a bit, just being able to see it. And you actually um, adjust it, you true it yourself, but you put a, a leveling board up, That's you measure it up, it's a leveling board, you know, you put a nail and a weight in the bottom and things like that. I put mine at 100 meters or something, a real calm, nice day. And I use shims up here that's supplied. And so it's, you know, it's uh, tight between the action and up and you actually adjust the scope until you put this thing where it's level then the rifle is level and you adjust the scope so the reticle is even with the leveling board or string and then you tighten it down and you keep the scope on that leveling thing and then you torque the front ring down with the reticle on the level and to make sure that the bubble level is level with the reticle. I've heard uh, some uh, other levels that you put on there aren't really 100% level. Well, this thing is as close as I can get it. Uh, Scope-wise, Schmidt and Bender PM2 with the new grid reticle has uh, proven to work. It's a very nice reticle and, well, Schmidt's don't really need an explanation, do they? Most of you guys out there, they, you know that Schmidt's are solid. The tracks, glass is fantastic, all that kinds of things. I don't need to go into more than that. What I mainly forget to talk about is my bolt handle from Sturk down in, I think it's Australia, I don't know. This was a buddy of mine who bought it for me. It gives it a nice feel. You have your finger like this and you crank off around, then you just lift it like this, come back, close. Okay, so magazine feeding with a 6BR. Well, the Tikas have a bit of an advantage. Since this shank here is smaller, then it's uh, the diameter is smaller than on a Remington 700 clone or Remington 700 or how or whatever. The, the distance between the feed ramp and the actual chamber is shorter. So you don't have as much flat surface to get the bullet to stuck, get stuck on. It helps a little bit with feeding with these little shuckers, but also magazine kit from Primal Rights. Uh, it works, it really does. I'm looking into making my own made out of the specs that I wanted, would like it to be. We're about to, we're gonna try it out later on this year and see if it's worth making it or until then, if anyone wants to get the BR running, it's Primal Rights kit, gets the job done. And uh, yeah, this should work and all. I've seen it run on impact and defiances and whatnots. It's just, it, it works, it's a good kit. Okay, so moving on to accessories and bags and binos and all those kind of fun little things. I'm gonna, I piled a bunch of it up here on the side and I'm gonna go through each of them one by one and explain a little bit about why I have it. So first off, those of you who've seen the Guardian video saw me on the hay, stack the hay bales or what you're gonna call it. Uh, I've used a very big plate underneath the rifle. It's the one from Grey Ops. Probably would not use this one on uh, on the rifle again, it's a bit too bulky. However, I'm going to get a ARCA clamp for the tripod and have this as a so-called tactical table or when I'm hunting or something like that, just put a game changer on top of here and run the rifle like that. I don't like to clamp the rifle down into a ARCA clamp or something like that. I just want that bag on top of this then. But it's a nice little thing. On the cartwheel, I saved a bunch of time by using this little bag. Uh, Blam Enterprises. This one was a gift to me by Janae Frainer when I stayed with uh, her and her family when I was at SHOT Show. Big thank you. It uh, has given me a, quite a few points over the season, so I think I, I owe you a drink or two next time. And uh, ammo pouches. Got uh, these when I shot the match in Montana. I ended up getting a bunch more. They're very nice. Uh, AEM precision, about 40 rounds in each. It's very nice just to be able to, if you see you're gonna shoot an 80 round match, you bring two of them and, you know, just stack them up. I think I can bring, I think I got six of these or something. For the game changer, I used the Armageddon Gear sticky one with the Git Light Fill. I actually bought the Git Light Fill after I bought the bag. 
Uh, now this thing weighs about 950 grams, but as soon as you put pressure on it, it's solid. I mean, the fill is pretty, pretty awesome, I'd say. So if you're in the market for a game changer, get the with the Git Light. It's just the way to go. Binos. Uh, I like to range all my targets by myself uh, for, for some reason. Uh, and uh, if you're a, allowed to do so, I use the Vortex Fury 5000. Uh, I've done it offhand out to like three kilometers. So it's during a match, it's way more power than you need. But the glass is phenomenal and you never have to worry about it not being able to pick up the target. I've tried it for a while now, ever since it was released. And it's a keeper for sure. Wind meter. I saw a lot of guys running Kestrels, but yeah, I, I used to have a Kestrel 5700, but in, in, at the end of the road, for me, it's a very expensive piece of kit, and I still use the Hornady Ford Off app in the phone because it's more accurate for me than using the Kestrel with a G7 value. I still I just used the Ford Off curve of the 108, which has with the 308, it gave me a this like I it get me on target with 0.1 or 0.2 mil off at 1640 50 meters, like above a mile. So it's accurate. And to get the atmospherics, I have I was given this weather flow meter by Tyler Frainer, and uh, it works really good. It picks up the wind, picks up the the barometrics and temperature and all things you need for the Ford off to work. So this thing goes with me everywhere. One plate that you put on the Arc Rail that I would probably end up using at pretty much every match that I can is also from Grey Ops. It's the mini gun plate or mini gun plate or however you want to call it. But this thing had just the perfect amount of width that was extra on the Arc Rail. So if you're in the market for a little gamer plate or whatever you want to call it, this one's the one to get. Not the bigger ones, if you want to put it on your rifle, this one will get the job done. Puff pillows or pump pillows or whatever you want to call it. This one has a few years on it, or maybe like two, I'd say. Goes with me to every match, match except the one in Ireland for some reason. It would have been nice to have, but it's kind of bulky. But all the matches I shoot over here in Scandinavia where I can drive my car, this one is with me. It was when it rains and you know it's going to be dirty or wet or whatever. Action cover, covers the scope and the action. Also for from AEM Precision up in Montana. Super little nice thing to have. You just take it like this. Run it under your scope. And voila. There's nothing getting in there, so. It keeps your rifle clean and dry because you don't want the excess water flowing into your chamber or anything like that. Uh, rear bag, if I'm not using a game changer as a rear bag, this is a very nice tab gear that Phil Vallejo gave me at SHOT Show for completing some sort of math quiz test competition he had on his Facebook. Uh, I think I finished that one in like 50 seconds from what he posted it or something. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it was a fun little thing where you calculated mills to MOAs and distance and get a number or something. And it was, yeah, I was just lucky enough to be able to see that post right away and took my calculator out and did, did uh, finished it. So he gave me a nice little rear bag from Tab Gear for that. Thank you. Just uh, get again. Thank you to the Guardian crew and all the guys who run the Midlands range. It was a very good match. I had a hell of a good time. And I'm definitely gonna come back the next time you host something that's uh, of that scale or even smaller. It was just nice. Ireland was fantastic to us. So um, yeah, I think that's about it. And uh, I'll see you later on. I got some more interesting uh, videos and projects coming up. So stay tuned. See ya.